Hey, everybody. I'm Captain Tommy Scovel, and that's Johnny. And uh, you're on the lifeboat. The uh, Spanx Calhoun is on the other side of the glass tonight. Spanx Calhoun will be uh, taking his uh, his spot in the uh, captain's seat. Spanky is going to be uh, having me pull some morning shows until uh, this is um, until the uh, the full transfer is over. But tonight he will be uh, right now. He is uh, sitting on the other side of the glass. You want to say hi, Calhounis? You can if you'd like. Actually, I shouldn't be ordering anybody around, I guess, these days. But Calhoun, where are you at? Oh, you know what? He th he's he may not be uh, uh, his raiment may not be uh, that uh, of which he hopes. So he's uh, he does he's sporting the hat though. It's good looking good looking chapeau. Christy Hughes, good to see you. Conversations with Christy. How are you, Michael? Aaron, Florence, Tina Marie, good to see you. Elizabeth Whitney, good to see you. Layla, what an odd song. I don't know the history of that song, but it's really an odd song. Johnny Scoville, how are you? I'm better than I deserve. Boy, I've five been... years sober today. Today is five years? Well, that gets a Molesky. Let me, five years. Let me sure. see that. That, was pretty awesome. that, that is was... very, very cool. That's a gift from my friend Damon from the Only Birds Twice Chili Peppers. And on the other side a is a walk in liberty. How cool, cool is that? Huh? I know, right? What a cool well, thing. Did he do that himself? I may have asked, I don't know, I may have asked you this. You probably had it before through your service and this. Would you suggest I carry this? Because a part of me wants to carry this around because it's so bloody cool. Part of me thinks I should carry it in this and not as a coin. Because in a coin, I'm going to lose it. And I would be so bloody. Then I wouldn't carry it if I were you. But that's so that's a Molesky right there. Uh, that's very, five very years cool. is there is is absolutely deserving of a molesky five years man I, I remember that phone call that was five years ago holy crap there yeah, i was. was there i was i was in Terre Haute, indiana yeah right Woo, go johnny yeah absolutely uh so to anybody confused uh from from last night uh i am uh, i am going to be handing the um the wheel uh to my kid it's going to allow me to do uh, other things that um, are going to uh, to really help propel this boat. And to be really honest, people, I got out of step, right? And you guys made that really, really clear. And that would be the reason. Uh, that would look great mounted next to your YouTube plaque. Well, there you go. See that? It would look really good mounted look next to your YouTube plaque. on there. Or we'll put it right on the plaque. Do it there, it's super glue. Do the tan across and just cover it with. with not such a bad idea. Actually, that's not such a bad idea. Like uh, so we're going to bring in some uh, some younger blood, and I'll tell you something. You know the the fact that Spanx Calhoun is in his thirties is probably going to mean that I will absolutely still be on here, Miss Sunrise Dawn. I will absolutely still be on here. I would imagine you'll uh, you'll have to uh, to show up and see, but I will be doing shows with Calhoun. Um, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, here's the deal. How long ago did we start talking about this, Calhoun? Uh, we had this, uh, we had this first conversation probably over a year ago. Yeah. I was still in Salt Lake. We saw the writing on the wall a long, long time ago. We did. This, I'm uh, surprised this is... we waited this long. Um, yeah, I think, uh, I think the timing is right. I think the timing is right. And, and the, I think the, um, the fact that I was getting away from what I do is probably an indicator that it was uh, time to, <coughs> uh, you know, but it's a great indie. It's a, it's a, also a great life lesson. I only got one more kid, right? There's a, there's no one else after Spanx Calhoun, you know, who, uh, but I would say before you decide that the uh, that the boat is going in a direction you don't like, give it a give it a month or two to see uh, to see what direction it goes in. Nothing is going to change in terms in terms of connection. Promise you that. The goal is always going to be for people to come together and be connected. And you know what? It's going to continue to happen. And I am going to be doing some stuff that's going to be very very interesting. There are I uh, I've told this story on the boat before. But um, somebody reached out to me. Um, somebody reached out to me two years ago and said, um, I want you to take my grandson 
and help him get sober. <laughs> and I said, I don't understand what that means, right? Like have him come on to the boat and, you know, and I'll work with him. And they said, no, no, we'd like to give you a pile of money. Take the, take him and help. I said, I don't, I, this isn't what I do. I don't do that. I'm not a, a therapist. I'm not a counselor. I'm not any of those people. They said, no, but this person listens to you. He's never listened to anybody else. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would have worked with that person differently than I did. And I worked with that person a lot. I bet you I spent 200 hours on the phone with this person. If I could do it all over again, I would wish I had spent 600 hours with that person. I think that uh, I think that that's one that we might have been able to, to save. And it's not my fault. I'm not taking it like that or anything else. But there are there are things that I will have the opportunity to do not sitting in this chair. And it's not it's not the show part. You understand? People, I got, I didn't answer any of your emails last night. I'm sorry. I didn't answer any of your comments last night. I didn't look at any texts. I just didn't. But this morning, as I started going through them, there were a lot of people that were like, you know, those damn haters. It's not a hater. This is the important lesson to learn here. There are no haters. I'm not walking away because of trolls. I'm walking away because of fans. And, that, and that's not an insult either. It's just overwhelming. And we're going to do everything we can to make sure that uh, Calhoun doesn't get overwhelmed, right? We're going to treat him, treat him a little different. And what it comes down to, people, is that we all need to lean on one another more, right? We need to lean on one another more and, and less on the, uh, the, the dude in the chair. And the beautiful thing about the boat is, in all honesty, and you all say it, I promise people you watch, it's going to keep going exactly how it goes, whether I'm sitting in this chair or Calhoun is, because the, the audience is the boat. Right. You remember that moment for your channel yeah. or you just went, Phew. it, it, uh, I absolutely do. Yeah. It's it. I remember where I was sitting. Yeah. yeah. Well, and I, and, and I don't want to be the person that we know somebody we're we're friends with somebody who hates their audience. Like he's vocal about it. Yeah. He doesn't even play games. He hates his audience. And, and which is crazy because he needs to love everyone he's got. And he needs to love everyone he's got. But, um, Good morning, Debbie Logan. You know what, Scoob? I'm like that with wristwatches. I drove out of the house yesterday without a damn watch on. I can't remember the last time you've done that. Eh? I, wrote, I drove out of the house without a watch on, and that does not ever happen. Until um, so you got one back on. Is this my last uh, stream? No, no, it's not my last stream. But... I am, let me, let me give you a great, just let me give you a great example. I've got, I got somebody that the boat is helping and you all made it possible to help this person on the bright side. This isn't a medical assisted treatment thing, right? Because that would really be horrific. Um, but all I got to do is drive and go put this money on for someone. <clears throat> and the person's been waiting three days on this three days because I can't get out of here to go drive to, to take care of it. So it's getting to a point where it's just, I'm not kidding. Like we put this on silent when the phone go, when the, when the boat goes live, but my kid can tell you, my, my brother could tell you when the, when the phone is not muted, it goes ding, 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 ding. It, it is literally sounds like something that they're doing for a movie and it's a joke. And it's not anybody that has my phone number because there's only about three that have my phone number. Right. This is just messenger. This is Facebook. This is right. You can't hear it right now, but I'm hearing discord beep in my ear. Right. Every time there's just a lot of ways that people can get in touch. And it overwhelmed me because I don't even have the brain for it. Like, I, to be really honest, we've been open and honest about all of this. Right. I want you to picture an eight track. Right. An eight track. And I don't mean like the kind we had as a kid. I mean, when you record to this day, right, they record eight different tracks and then they layer up. OK, well, two of mine aren't working. So in order for me to do anything in life, I have to do external hard drives for the two tracks that aren't working, my internal stuff. So I have to do it with journaling and I got to do it with all of these different things that I do externally. And it works beautifully as it is set up, right? But when I begin to take on the problems of, say, four or 500 other people, right, at the same time as I'm taking on mine, I schedule to go and talk to, I talk to three different people a week. I'm not somebody that has tried to, to rough it. I talk to people about the fact that your problems are my problems. 
Um, you know, it's a, it, it is what it is. I, I talk to people about all of that, which is good, right? It's necessary. You got an eight track matrix rabbit still has an eight track. You know, what was that? bothersome about an eight track, huh? I always wanted the song. It was right. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And you always Spanky, had to listen to one extra song you didn't want to. Every time. Spanky doesn't, doesn't let, let me bring you up to speed for Calhoun and the two or three other people that are not familiar with the eight track concept. But when you wanted to go to the next part of the uh, cassette, right, you could jump, but you couldn't jump to the next song. You always jumped to the next part of the, it, it was, if you wanted song two, you got song four, right? It was absolutely awful. It really was. But it was cool because it was in this little box like this big. And when you shoved it into an eight track player in your car, ACDC was like this big back at you or Aerosmith. Nothing ever looked cooler in a cassette player. <laughs> uh, yeah. You know what, Mira dear, the, that's, I think the first time somebody said that on the boat was probably maybe three weeks on the boat. Jennifer Folsom, as Reese would say, it's just too much. I'm doing too much. Yeah. That's, that's what Quiver would say. I've been doing too much. Uh, a track with the matchbook rolled up in the, uh, in the car. Oh wow! No way. Uh, <laughs> Who said they, they that? Still have one. They still Who have said one. that? Yeah, you, you're still rocking. They still have one. They're still using it. They're looking at it right now. Oh, that's so funny. I never would have. I would have. That is so funny. If you are not old, then that just doesn't mean anything. I to remember you, but... the first song I ever heard on the track recording. Was it the Bee Gees? It was the Beatles. It was Obla D Obla Da. Really? I was a kid and they I, I remember hearing I, I, it was the first Beatles song I ever heard. It just changed my life. Like legit changed my life. Yeah, and I can see that. I can absolutely see that. Uh you know the the um the first eight track that I got was the um was the Beach Boys. Greatest but here's no, if it had been greatest hits, that would have been great. But instead of greatest hits, it was some bunk, I mean, horrible Beach Boys album, right? It had nothing on it you wanted, except, except Shut Down. It happened on a strip where the road is wide. But if you only have one good song on an eight track, do you have any idea how bad life is? Huh? It's not like you're just going to rewind that puppy, right? You're going to have to listen to three songs to get back to that. Barbara Ann is a great song. Unfortunately, was not on that track. You want a good piece of trivia, Tommy Bird? Huh? Uh, so that that uh, Barbara Ann, they had a mother of a time recording that, right? They did so many takes and they were laying down all of the, and it just was not working. They were really, really struggling and they were fighting and arguing and everything else, not just the band, but the band with the people in there. So when it was done, they said, all right, that's a wrap. Then they did one more, right? And they were farting around and laughing. In fact, that sound you hear is the drummer playing the ashtray that he had right next to him. He even says, jam out on that ashtray. And he just goes and starts playing the ashtray. And all of that, all of the, it's all just, you know, ad lib and screwing around. And they they rolled with it. That was the, the take that ended up getting recorded. You heard Wendy yesterday? Everyone knows it's windy. That would be the association. The association. Yep. I, was, I was about to. I, I literally had this. I can't believe I got that. Is that the association? How about that? I am the cutest little fluffy bunny. Eh? I have not been called a cute fluffy bunny in forty-five minutes. It was the association. It was the association. Was the, I was one year old when that thing came out. I should get bonus points. I'll be really honest. Um, your husband used to uh, think they were uh, singing. Barra Am? Oh, Barra Am. I hope you mock him Barbara incessantly. Am. Barbara Am, I love it. <laughs> ba, 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 Hello, Brian Doyle. Or Bolin. Sorry, Brian Bolin. We have a Brian Doyle. Uh, eight weeks. Wow. That gets a molest. That's awesome. Congratulations on eight weeks of sobriety. This is not going to change. Nothing about that is going to change. What you're going to get is fresh blood. You're going to get somebody that is really fired up and is sober and is excited and is, uh, you know, I'm sorry, but what happens is you get a little worn out. I'm going to be here. I'm going to constantly be here. 
fact, you just need to show up because you just never know. I'm, uh, I may, uh, you know, I could, I could be popping in just to say hi on every show too. I'm glad you're here, Reese. Uh, but I, uh, I started to get away from doing what the boat does because I had just done so much of it. And every time I would do a show about some really heavy stuff that needed to get done, a hundred of you would end up uh, sending an email and reaching out. And I want to help everybody. I really do. You know, and we tried to, to step it away and tried to make it so that I answered less. And then we hired somebody that was going to do uh, emails. And in one day, the person did so much damage to the lifeboat. It's astounding that the lifeboat's still in business. In one day of letting somebody else touch emails, right? It's just, you know, so, but we're pretty fired up. I'm, I'm not at all bummed out. My kid's not at all bummed out. And I don't think anybody else is either. Not- Eight months, guys. What? Narcoleptic Chihuahua Productions, or you're at eight months? How in hell did we not know this? So I missed six. I don't remember congratulating you at six months, Narcoleptic uh, Chihuahua Productions. We said right in the beginning that there were two things we were always going to do here, no matter what. One, we were going to own our past, right? We were never going to go, oh, well, you know what? It's not really my fault because, oh, no, it's your fault. Now, You don't have to feel guilty about it, but don't say it's not your fault because it is, right? But on the other side of that, we're going to celebrate every single thing worth celebrating. If that's two days, right, or that's eight months, we're going to celebrate every victory because in the real world, when we tell people that we're eight months sober, they look at you like, well, you should be. I've been sober my whole life. I should be proud of you for doing what everybody else does. Well, everybody else doesn't have our disease, yeah? So this Molesky is for you, my brother, the Steve Molesky Award. And you know what? It couldn't be uh, named better. I, uh, much love to whoever came up with that idea. I don't know who came up with it. I think Seventh might have been the person that reached out to me on it. Um, and he said, everybody is saying. So I don't know who came up with it. I think it's a really beautiful idea. It really is. Um, and this Molesky is for you, my brother. <laughs> No Chihuahua, (laughs) no Chihuahua I've ever met has been anything close to narcoleptic. Just saying. Now, I would agree with you, Tommy Bird, but I will make, I will say the exception to this is, have you ever put a Chihuahua in the sun? Because I have seen a uh, Chihuahua, one in particular, actually, that um, will get in the sun and it's like an instant quaalude. This dog goes, falls on its side. It only had three legs, but all three of them would instantly just go, like it was the happiest. Scooby Lee says, I was four years clean of Coke and alcohol when I found the boat almost at six now. Love that. Brandon Galloway, good to see you. But please do me a favor and don't talk about this like the boat is ending today because it's not. Okay? Boat's not going to end when Calhoun leaves that chair either. I promise. It's not going to happen that way. The boat is bigger than uh, than the Scovilles. Three weeks, 21 days today. Maybe I should just not put the Steve down, huh? What do you think? Maybe the the, uh, the Steve Molesky Award should remain in my hand. Brandon, that's my man. You get knocked down, you get you get back up again, right? And I'll be honest. I'll be honest. I was talking about. At the, uh, I'm getting ready to Johnny. Sorry. At the last, um, at the last festival that we were at, uh, I was talking to somebody and we were talking about um, relapses and we were talking about things. And somebody said to me, they brought up uh, Brandon and Brandon's name gets brought up a lot. And the reason is Brandon was the first person on the lifeboat that ever said, Hey, I got loaded last night. <clears throat> had no reason whatsoever to tell us that he got loaded. There was no reason at all for anyone to even know, but he was the first person to ever come out and go, Hey, I got drunk last night. And it was a big deal. Everybody was like, damn, it occurred to us that no one ever would have known. Right. But he would have, and I have mad respect for that. And it's kind of set the bar that people have always just come here and said when they, uh, when they've struggled, But somebody said to me, you know, it's impressive, uh, you know, and but he's relapsed a few times. This is the way I look at it. In the time that I've known the dude, he spent about this much time drinking. (laughs) 
for real. The vast majority of the time that I have known that man, he has been sober. I was talking to Johnny Scoville about this today. We have a, we have a friend, you know, Johnny's celebrating five years today. And we have a friend who was, was it 10? Was it, it was either long time, you know, a long, long time, drank a beer, right? Thought maybe I can do this and decided uh, had a beer. And at the end of the beer went, oh my God, what am I doing? Didn't have a second one. Didn't have a third one. Also, by the way, didn't walk away with the thought, I'm capable of this. I can do this, right? I can do this. Walked away going, oh my God, what did I do? I blew 10 years. You're blowing 10 years. How the hell did that blow 10 years? Right? And this poor guy now wants to re start recounting. He's not going to go get that. Go get your chip, man. Get your chip and put it in your pocket. That's it. You know? Hey, Jackson. I miss you. I haven't seen Flaming Jackson in a while. I love you too, man. And I mean that. <clears throat> and I mean that. Oh, Miss Sunrise Dunn. Thoughts and prayers going out for uh, for you and for your dad. That's uh, that's hard. The boat uh, the boat is always going to be here to support um, to be a peer support group. Always, you hear me? It is always going to be here to be a uh, peer support group. Nothing changes. Mischief managed says happy fifth, Johnny Scoville. Thank you. Huh? Leave that one up there. Um, 10 years ago, he would have kept drinking, right? 10 years ago, that beer would have turned into two beers, would have turned into six, nine, right? It's 1,826 days. 1,826 days. That's and, five years? And they, and they, claim, oh. they claim I've saved $14,608, and I have saved way more than that. Good I Lord. How much money did they say you saved? Fourteen dollars $15,000. They didn't, they didn't watch you party. Well, here's the thing. They also didn't factor in <laughs> how much stupid stuff you spend money on once you're drinking. Not just that, the the, the, the ripple effect of problems and everything else. I mean, my well, God. but I mean, like when I used to go out and spend money and be stupid, it wasn't just the drugs that you spend the money on. Yeah, I had zero respect for money. Like right. when you have money in your pocket and you're a heroin addict, the money is only equal to her heroin. It's, right. it's not good for anything else. So if somebody's like, hey, you got five bucks, it's, what's five bucks? Like, you know. Five bucks does nothing. Everything was done in $10 increments anyway. $4 was nothing. Thank you for lovingly giving me a kick, uh, a butt kicking. I promise never to say sorry for dumping. <laughs> By doing that, the people in the chat and you made me connect and not hide in the corner that day. Well, Mary, I wasn't trying to kick your butt. But um, but we're never, we never want to <coughs> apologize for dumping because this is a dumping spot, right? We're, we are a dump. Uh, that's what it is. We're dumb. Uh, I believe, and I'm right, that when you put stuff in a closet in your dome and you do not deal with it, right? When that door comes off of the hinges, nothing good happens, right? Nothing good happens. I, I, have, uh, I have a problem with this. By the way, I didn't know what passive aggressive meant until three or four weeks ago. I had to have somebody explain it to me. Do you know what it means? You do? That's yeah. it's one of those things that I've heard people say my entire life. And because I am a guy and we hate saying stuff like, I don't understand what you, what that means. I just never, uh, I never said it, but um, I did a video. The last video that I did with, um, with quibble, uh, the great question girl asked us a uh, question and, um, you know, I can't remember exactly what the question was, but, but one of the answers was Reese said, you know, I'm, I'm afraid that he's going to explode if I say something that's going to, you know, make him unhappy or whatever. And I got like seven passive aggressive emails. Didn't know what that meant until about three weeks ago from people who just said, I just want you to know that I don't think you're, guess what? Missed me with all of that. For real, they miss me with all that. Now that I'm kind of understanding the uh, the whole concept of the passive aggressive thing, uh, it it was funny because the people who said, "I want you to know that you know I don't think that you know that you're scary," neither does she, right? 
what what was said, and it's legit, is that I am a person who holds on to things until I explode with them. I know it doesn't hurt anybody, but it certainly puts me into a bad situation. And most of you have seen it. If you've been around long enough, you've watched me explode on the boat, right? I can assure you, I tend to do it a little bit worse when the camera isn't rolling, right? Now, I'm not, I'm not a rageaholic. I don't break things. I don't, you know, well, rarely. But it is, it is something that, uh, that I need work on in my life, to be sure. It, um, it hurts to explode. It hurts to explode on you, right? Even if there's no one else around, it, it absolutely hurts. It is a bummer. Um, Brian Bowen said, I wouldn't have made it 28 years without my journal. Talk about holding on to things, right? Um, narcissists are often passive aggressive. You know, Ali, I think you're right on that. I think we're we're in a really weird um way more calculated. Yeah, I, I we're in a really odd time right now in the world, right? Um Don in Wyoming, we miss you too. Glad you're here. Uh we're in a weird time where because of all of the information that are that is at our fingertips, we all um have started to uh working as a court reporter, losing your hand over a slip is over. It's a journey. Don't fall over a bad day. Decide to be happy is my foundation. You are authentic. Why, thank you. You know, court reporters fascinate me, CBC. Um, I uh, I dated one. I was engaged to, uh, to a court reporter, <coughs> but she was no longer working as a court reporter. She had uh, taken a job working for Microsoft, but she had been a court reporter for years. And she, I don't know if you talk into the deal or if you type. Right. She used the little typing thing. But uh, we were talking about, oddly enough, I like you. We were talking about the lifeboat. <laughs> this was uh, 17 or 18 years before um, the lifeboat. Right. A long time. But the, I was talking about how I thought I, uh, I, had a, a, I had a message that I wanted to take to the parents of kids about how you could do a better job trying to. Um, trying to raise drug-free kids. And she said, you should write a book about that. And I said, I'm not capable of writing a book. And she said, oh no, you know, the, I said, listen, the way I talk and the way I write are two different things. And she said to me, I promise you can't talk faster than I can type. And I went, okay, let's give that a try. And do you know what? I could not talk faster than she could type. It was absolutely astounding. I did that with a woman who did shorthand. Well, that's what this little thing is, is shorthand. It looks like script. Well, in fact, one day I went like this on a piece of paper and she said it was a thing about groceries. And like I was scribbling. I said, that's nonsense. I could scribble and make sense of it. And I put a bunch of stuff on a piece of paper and there were some things that did make sense. So, I mean, but I could not talk faster than she could. No, uh, yeah. This was, you know who this was. Yeah. yeah. Um, she had a, the, the little device is about this big. I mean, CBC knows what I'm talking about, but there are, it's not, letters it's like words and parts of words and it, it's really and... they are uh, magical gnomes says sb yes this has been my um this has been my deal too the w i'm more blown away by the people that just talk into the thing because then what they got to go home and type it yeah miss me with that yeah miss me with that but as fast as i could talk she could do it and i am fascinated by that i really do if i were a court reporter i'd be scared of AI do they make two month me. coins extra chris are you on two months virginia awesome. martinez thank you very much welcome to the boat do, yeah they make two months coins extra chris they make they make phonetic word groups says um cbc well it's easy for you to say uh stenography i do believe they're called stenographers chris this is not a two-month coin, but this is a Molesky, the Steve Molesky trophy, which is given out in honor of people who are making it, right? People who are fighting. And two months is definitely fighting. Congratulations, Chris. That is a uh, that is worth celebrating. By the way, if you got 48 hours, it's worth celebrating. You got 48 minutes. If you drank 10 minutes ago, but you're pretty sure it's the last one, right? That's worth celebrating. That's why this app on my phone is good. Every day is a coin. From the Very people that brought you the home stenographer, here is the backpack stenographer. Yeah. Brought to you by Ron Popeil. I don't seem to be able to journal. I do, however, talk to myself all the time. I need to figure out a way to talk to my journal. I guess I'm too lazy to write. Maybe. Maybe. 
or maybe you struggle to write because your ability to talk and your ability to write don't match up. See, that's me. I don't use words writing if I can't spell them. I don't use words writing if I think that I don't know, uh, you know, the, the conjugation is correct or if, or if it's a, something that I don't know whether or not there should be an apostrophe in an S or not an apostrophe in an S. I just won't use it. And I've gotten to a point now where I got over all of that, right? Now what I do is I write and I write with the assumption that the only person that's ever going to see it is me. I understand what I write. I promise you no one else does. When I pass away and my kids go through my stuff, they're going to just throw it out. There's just not a lot there that you're going to be able to understand because I write what I write and what uh, CBC does is probably, yeah, probably would be just as easy to read. You know, it's, uh, it's pretty ugly stuff. You know, it's weird. I do that with my journaling as well. Every once in a while at night, I'll have the stroke of genius that I don't want to forget. And I'll write it down uh -huh. in the morning. It looks, you can send it to the boys at Quantico and they're not going to be able to tell you what that is. I have no idea what it is. And I wrote it, but my journal, I can somehow decipher everything. It's weird. I can't decipher stuff that where I'm sort of away from that. Rob Lowe had a thought about having a mimosa <laughs> and it put him in, uh, in rehab for 30 days. Uh, you know what? It doesn't take much, man. Uh, Tommy Bird says, I write better than I speak. I think Johnny Scoville is the only person I've ever met who can do both exactly the same way. I don't think you write better than you speak, and I don't think you speak better than you write. And that's odd. It really is odd. He seems to be ambidextrous with that. Valerie Smith says, Tommy, I can't wait to see what the future looks like for you. I can't either. And I'm excited as hell. I'll be honest, there will be a whole lot of boat in it. I promise you that there'll be a whole lot of boat in it. The story of us, of my brother and I, and how uh, we ended up where we are today, sitting on this couch is going to be out and it's going to be out within a couple of months, right? This is something that we're working on very, uh, very hard. And I'll be really honest. Um, it He's going to be doing the, uh, the heavy lifting, right? Don't beat yourself. Well, I mean, oh, I'm going to have to be there, but you are going to be doing the heavy lifting. It's just like a mental marathon, that's all. I believe that, Tommy Bird. I believe that. Metric cons console. Uh, there are people who take the coins thing really, really similar. I mean, really, really seriously. I'll be honest with you. I don't. The talisman thing is huge in recovery, right? And I'm all for talismans. I think that they work. For me, the first thing I did when I got sober was get a watch, right? And I'm a watch person. Yeah, I am. But I was in prison and there was a guy that came in from the streets who said, the first thing I did when I got out was I got a watch that was more expensive than I could afford. He said, it wasn't a Rolex. It wasn't anything stupid. He said, but when I looked down on my wrist, I wanted to look every time I looked at that watch and realized that the most valuable commodity that I had was time. And for those of us who flushed a good chunk of our lives down the toilet, whether you did it on the street or whether you did it in prison, if you were loaded, guess what? You were flushing your uh, stuff down the toilet. So I've gotten very serious about respecting the crap out of time. I have a lot of watches, but all of them definitely re uh, remind me that um, it's a very important thing. I don't go to meetings. I run into old users who want me to jump in the car with them. Does that sound familiar? Chris, I have, I have overdosed. I mean, I have uh, relapsed, rather overdosed. I've never overdosed. I have relapsed twice. Um in the parking lot twice in my life. I got sober where I was legit sober and I was trying to stay sober and I was really trying to work it. And I overdosed in the parking lot of a narcotics anonymous meeting twice. I'm never going back to that. When I got out of prison this last time and my probation officer who was a jerk, right? First thing he said to me was, boy, you're an effing piece of S. That was the first thing the dude said to me. So he wasn't a good dude. And he said, uh, you're going to bring me 90 meetings in 90 days. You're right. You got to go to a meeting. I went, not going to happen. I'm not kidding. I said, you could take me back to prison. I'm not going to one meeting. There you go. I said, that's where I get high. So do what you do. You want to take me back? I'd rather be in prison than addicted to heroin. And thank God, you know, he let me open the lifeboat. Um, 
I can't quit thinking about you saying drugs only <clears> have <throat> to list six choices. Scary. I don't know what that means, Johnny. Do you know what she's saying? No. I can't quit thinking about you saying drugs only have to list six choices. Calhoun, do you know what that means? Because now I'm feeling maybe it's me. Can you rewrite that for me so that I can understand that? Because I do want to answer you, but I'm not sure what that means. Jeremy Shelton wants to save time in a bottle. Uh, I have I have a preoccupation with time that may be unhealthy, right? I really have a, I am. I think we all do. Yeah, I mean, everybody thinks about it. I am, I, I mean, it's, it, it is a, a very big part of my day. When I'm doing the best, I find I live in 16 minute intervals. Like when I live in 16 minute <laughs> increments, I, that's what I'm doing my best. Avina Sativa has been in a few meetings. <laughs> God, I hate reading the laminated menus for 20 minutes in meetings. <laughs> Possible side effects with TV ads. Ah, there you go, CBC. Yeah, they uh, they only have to write a limited number of those um, side effects, right? Uh, and it's amazing what those side effects that they choose are, right? I mean, if, if they're telling you that this can kill you, and that was one of the uh, side effects they chose to tell you about, that make you make you a little nervous. Ah, she's triggered by the actual word drugs and has to focus on word choices. Oh, I gotcha. You're bummed out because I say drugs. I gotcha. Yeah, this is going to be a shit show for you then because I say drugs a lot. You're going to you're going to just hate the lifeboat. I say drugs a lot. You know why? Because everybody here is addicted to drugs. Right. Most everybody here. Right. You know what? It's well if you whisper it, when you say the word, when you say addiction, it takes the potency away. Well, I'm not. Yeah, I, I mean, believe that. So I think it's important. Just to drop in to say what a beautiful yeah. group this is. Your never quit quitting attitude gives me strength and hope. Love me some Tommy too in a big way. Heading to my ex husband's funeral in oh, Minnesota. I'm so sorry. So I'll see you next week. Uh, Pajama Pixie, please be safe and uh, know that uh, we're going with you because that's hard, man. That is, that is hard. And you know what? Funerals suck. Funerals absolutely suck. By the way, there are only two countries on the planet that allow big pharma, right, to advertise for their products on television. New Zealand and the United States of America, right? Words are powerful, aren't they? Words mean things. Words are powerful, to be sure. Lori says, hi, Calhoun. Grateful. I'm pretty grateful to have him too. You know that? I really am. I am. Uh, I'm a pretty big fan of Spanx Calhoun. Those side effects are random. My nurse mom said when people are on uh, drug trials, they have to write all of their new effects. If they have diarrhea from a taco, they have to write it. Jenny, this is a fact. So as I have told some of the people here, um, As I've told most of the people here, uh, I am taking a drug right now that you can't get at a pharmacy, right? I'm taking a drug that you can only get if um, the doctor uh, allows you to get on to um, trying this because it hasn't gone through all of the, um, the clinical trials. But they want you to, uh, they want you to um, ad nauseum write down every single thing you know i have uh, atrial flutter so if my heart flutters i gotta write down now flutter happens where it feels like it's gonna kick up and you get a brrr, and then it stops and goes back down that happens four or five times a day but i gotta write down every time it happens what time of the day it is how long was it from when i used it's pretty vicious i was actually just telling quibble about this what a pain in the can it is um Hold on a second. I just saw. Uh, wow. Time is. Uh, question, Tommy. I was just prescribed baclofen, but I've never heard of it. A week and a half into my uh, neck, shoulder being screwed up. I'm getting cranky. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I am not a doctor. Don't play one on TV. Nothing like that. Baclofen is usually given to people, in my understanding, as a like kind of a heavy duty uh, form of muscle relaxer. Um, I've known four or five people in my life who were on baclofen. Three of them got it in pump form. So they had a baclofen pump in their back. 
much like seventh has a pump inside and they go in and fill it. And then that pump would leak the baclofen out over 120 days or whatever, the, whatever the reservoir holds. Right. So, um, I can, I don't know whether or not baclofen would cause uh, people to get, uh, to get grumpy or cranky. My experience has been that when I come off of muscle relaxers, if when I come off of benzodiazepines, when I come off of anything that yeah, kind of turns you into a, a sponge or makes you kind of jelloy, I'm always a little bit angry, a little bit uh, grumpy and tough to be around. So that could be, uh, that could be legit. You're looking into sublocate shot? Yes. Please come back and tell us about it. Um, let do an interview with Spanks Calhoun on sublocate. When you when you when that is done, come back and be uh, Spanky's first interview. We uh, I would love to have somebody on here that uh, that has been doing sublocate. I would love to take that and let people hear about it. Uh, Avina, I mean, from take us on the entire journey from the shot on, because it would be very interesting to hear. Um, you know, how that, uh, how that works. Yes. TV ads for non-prescription medicines only and mostly supplements here. Uh, and there is a consult doctor disclaimer. Well, that sounds a lot more reasonable, doesn't it? Our, uh, our Russian counterparts seem to be doing a better job. Um, hope Spanx keeps up the random songs in lives would miss having green acres stuck in my head at least once a week. I'll be here at least once a week. And I'll go, Green Acres is the place to be. I'll do it for you at least once a week, right? Dun, 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 dun. I'm here. I got your back. Johnny hates it. I do it to him when I'm not live, and he just gives me this look like he's not uh, hes not a fan of the Green Acres. Never was. No. I'm sorry. I love You know what? Show. It was one of those shows that you had to watch before Gilligan's Island. You didn't have much. There was much you knew about it. It's true. Well, you know what else was like that, too, though, was um, <clears throat> Petticoat right. Junction. I watched a lot of Petticoat Junction to get to the good stuff afterwards. Is anyone else think Suboxone and Methadone is just a substitution? Well, um, it is, right? It's a substitution to be sure. Suboxone would be substituting buprenorphine, right? Mixed with um, naloxone for either heroin or say fentanyl. Methadone, same thing, except yeah, Lawrence Welk was awful. Um, Methadone. Honey kind was amazing though. Bonnie County was beautiful and, and lovely. Over. And lovely. Uh, methadone is a painkiller, a legit painkiller, right? Um, so the doctors are the new dealers? Well, yeah, maybe. I mean, the doctors write you a prescription, so they're not actually selling the drugs. I guess the dealer would be the, um, you know, but here's the deal. The, the disease that is treated by Suboxone and methadone is actually a disease, right? Opiate abuse disorder is a disease. Now, there's a medication that treats that disease that doesn't get you high. Suboxone does not get you high. Trust me when I tell you this, right? If you are somebody who does opiates on a regular basis, um, they get paid monthly. They do. And uh, you're going to be going there for years, to be sure. The other option is to continue to buy the dope on the street. Because statistically speaking, statistically speaking, 90 plus percent of people that get addicted to an opiate die addicted to an opiate, still using, right? So if the option is to pay a doctor $90 a month, which is what I pay a doctor, 90 bucks a month. And then I personally don't pay for the prescription, but if I had to, it would be another 90 and that would be 180 bucks. Um, I had a $700 a day heroin habit. So if I traded a $700 a day heroin habit for a $180 Suboxone habit, a drug that got me high for a drug that doesn't get me high, a drug dealer that I meet on a telephone once a week versus a drug dealer I meet three times a day in a parking lot, risking that each time I meet this guy, I might get arrested and go to prison. I'm probably going to go with the swapping out for the Suboxone. And I'm probably going to recommend to everybody else, they go that route. Now, once you're on the Suboxone, you can eliminate all of the things that you were doing in your life. Um, <laughs> I don't like the idea of being um, dependent on anything, well, except cannabis. I'm not mad at you for doing cannabis, by the way. If it, uh, if it works for you, fantastic. And I like the idea of you not being dependent on anything but cannabis. 
I like the idea of everybody on planet Earth not being dependent on anything, even cannabis, right? However, I'm a pragmatist, yeah? I'm a realist. And I have had the benefit or misfortune or however you want to look at it of having about 20,000 people that have gone um, through here in the last three or four years. And what I have found, um, what I have found is that Suboxone eliminates the need to steal, right? To go get your dope. It eliminates the need to lie to everybody in your life about what you're doing. It eliminates all of the stuff that creates the negative ha uh, stuff around the habit. In other words, I'm not stealing from anybody to do Suboxone. Yeah. I'm not sticking needles in my arms and getting infections to do Suboxone. I'm not having to, you know, I'm not having to do any of the things that I had to do. Now, if I choose to, to, um, I would take my own life if I was dependent on Vegemite. I would step down. If I choose to step down off of Suboxone, that's something that could be done. Stepping down off of heroin is impossible, right? Nobody does it successfully. It's just never been done. But you can do it with, with Suboxone. Now, I did. I got all the way off of it. And I found that when I'm on Suboxone, I'm a better human being. Just a much better human being. Because all of the damage I did to myself in 30 years of being addicted to opiates really shines unless I'm able to paint the MU receptor with buprenorphine. In doing so, my brain believes I just did a shot of heroin. Doesn't mean I'm high, right? Do I look high to you? You know, there's no nod, there's no nothing. And I do two milligrams. So I do one quarter of a strip every day. And you know what? I'm going to take it until the day I die by choice. I've gotten off it. I've done it twice, actually. Gotten all the way off of it twice. Three technically, but the third time I didn't do it on purpose. <laughs> um, Beta says, talking about fresh blood, love to see Spanx interviewing Tara, the girl from Good Questions. I watched her channel and they are so both similar in experience and she's very interesting. Well, maybe uh, Spank, you'll take it in that direction. Beta, thanks for the, uh, the um, thought. You guys can send uh, thoughts to Calhoun for uh, what you think he might uh, want to do for shows to um, sober at myyahoo.com. That's sober at myyahoo.com. And then uh, he'll uh, he'll figure out what he's going to do and take it in that in that direction. Um, I had on a I had on a doctor. Uh, Gosh, it's got to be a year and a half ago, maybe a long time ago. His name is Dr. Jetmore. Go back and watch the interview that I did with Dr. Jetmore because he has a very interesting, um, I, uh, you know, angle on uh medical assisted treatment. See, he ran it for an entire state. And the really funny thing is that he took the job, probably the way a lot of prison uh, um, wardens take the job. And by that, I mean, uh, he wasn't a real fan <laughs> of people who were addicted to drugs. Um, he thought they were scumbags. He also thought, um, he also thought that uh, medical assisted treatment was a bit of a joke. But they offered him a lot of money. <laughs> yeah, Lady Hawk, I like it this way. Sorry, I really dig it this way. Um, so after he got the job, he said, you know what I found? Calhoun, subs have withdrawals if you were to quit them cold turkey. They don't have withdrawals because you can continue to cut the doses in half and keep doing that. And that's why it has no... Um, Benzos are hard as you know what to get off and can kill you in the process if you're not careful. You got to be very, very careful with uh, benzos. Talk to your doctor before you quit them, please. For my experience, how does Suboxone versus Oxycodone withdrawal compare? Um, well, here's the deal. Withdrawal is, is um, you know, to quantify one versus the other, I have kicked heroin. I've kicked fentanyl. I've kicked Oxycontin. I've kicked all of them. The worst kick ever? Methadone. Methadone. Not even close. Not, yeah. not even close. Methadone was the hardest kick um, on planet earth. I was taking 300 milligrams a day. I got thrown into a box, right? Locked. And when I got out of that box, 
32 days later, I was still puking. I'm not joking. Yeah, it's because of how long it, the stuff stays in your... Uh, in, Christy, I yeah. have that arm too. It's like polonium 232. Yeah. Ridiculous. Methadone is absolutely cold turkey, the worst substance in the world to kick. And when you're done kicking it, you're not done kicking it. Because it's going to get into parts of your body you won't believe, right? Um, the worst most violent kick. And I'm not being funny. It, I, I went into my arraignment. Well, subs are nothing like that, Chris. We're talking about apples and friggin' oranges. I mean, I don't, I don't BS anything. I, t- I tell everything exactly how it is. You can't compare Suboxone and, uh, and methadone. One is an agonist, right? You're right. It gets into your bones. Well, fentanyl technically doesn't. That sounds good right? Maybe street fent. Alpha fentanyl does not get into your bones. It does not. And technically neither does methadone. What it does is it gets between your bones and your muscle, right? Um, Fent, kicking fent was a absolute nightmare, right? I kicked fentanyl. It was an absolute nightmare. But I'll tell you something. Car fentanyl, nobody on earth is kicking car fentanyl. Nobody on earth is doing car fentanyl. It's another one that sounds good. Car fentanyl, you couldn't cut car fentanyl down enough to then actually use it. One grain of car fentanyl, right, will kill three people. How are you going to get that in your body? Seriously, you crush that grain up and go like this as you walk by. That stuff was made to knock down pachyderms, right? Yeah, that's made to take down 6,000. Was that that? Like that. awesome. That's made to take down 6,000 pounds, 8,000 pounds, right? Pachyderms. There's no, car fentanyl. Every <laughs> height tolerance is doable. You know what? Do me a favor and get Chris out of here. Chris, you're an idiot. I'm sorry. Seriously, Calhoun, just block him for the day. Chris, you're stupid. I love you, brother. And I, and I've been patient, but you know what? You're an idiot. You're, 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 uh, you're, 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 uh, going to get a tolerance to the point to do carfentanil. Educate yourself and come on back. Okay? Educate yourself and come on back. Two milligrams of fentanyl will kill you. Two milligrams. I want you to get and Google what two milligrams of powder looks like, right? Carfentanil is 1,000 times the strength, on average, of alpha fentanyl. If two milligrams of alpha fentanyl can kill you. If you multiply that by a thousand, what are we looking at? You can't touch it. The people that cut it die. Whatever your tolerance gets to, brother, my tolerance, right, was off the hook. I did eight grams, seven and a half, eight grams a day. I had a pretty rugged tolerance. But I'm telling you right now, car fentanyl, there's nobody on planet Earth getting high on car fentanyl. They're not. Sounds good. Makes for a great story. Nobody's doing car fentanyl. Yeah, no, it's not bad. I, I have, I, I like people that come and have conversations, but people that come and, and that, I was very patient. I was very patient. I really I was. was. How long ago well, no, you know, here's the thing, people. Guys like Chris. Here's the problem with guys, guys like Chris. One of my favorite expressions: a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing, right? Car fentanyl is a drug. I've said this before, and I'll say it again, and then we'll get back to Chris. Car fentanyl. Here's the deal. Because it didn't, because you have two kinds, right, of of uh, of um, painkiller, opiate, opioid. One is not a plural of the other, which people like to say, right? An opioid is a synthetic version of an opiate. Opiate comes from a poppy. The poppy has a potential of one hundred, right? The strongest the dope can be is hundred. You can't make the dope stronger than what the plant will allow it to be, just like weed, right? Okay, if you were to make that without a poppy, then you can just keep going, let's multiply it by two. Let's multiply it by two. Let's multiply it by two. So you started out with the, a possible of 100, right? Well, now you can take it to 1,000 or 10,000 or 100,000 or a million. So they came up with a drug because what do you do for an elephant that breaks its leg, right? Well, we... we we deal with this now in, in the world, right? There are people that deal. So what do you do with an elephant that breaks a leg? You give it carfentanil. You have to have a painkiller, right? For 8,000 pound animals, it's called carfentanil. Now, 
Every once in a while, some jackass who works at a zoo tries to get a little car fentanyl out because he figures, I know this dude, right? Who knows this dude? And he cool slings guy. stuff, right? And his old man's got this ultimate toolkit and they're going to pulverize this car fentanyl. And what usually happens is four deaths. And it's normally not the guys they're selling it to. They it's the up. jack wagons who are mixing it. You can't be in a room breathing this stuff, right? And it's every day. Wow, that's odd. No, methadone is not used for uh, alcohol withdrawal. It shouldn't be. Anyway, you could use any opiate on planet Earth, right? For, no, for, <laughs> for that. But it's the worst possible case scenario, right? What you would be using. Thank you, that's Midnight not, Show. God not, bless uh, you. Or what is the best? What? Uh, it's it the, harm reduction? That's, that's not harm reduction. <laughs> yeah, that's not harm reduction. This is the worst. Thank you, Arwa. This is the worst co uh, concept. And the reason is, so with for alcohol withdrawal, we have the perfect pill, right? Anything that is a benzo is the perfect pill for alcohol withdrawal because it is alcohol in a pill. Benzos do the same thing in the brain, literally the exact same thing in the brain. We love you, Reese. No, I really appreciate all the support. Oh, I really do. But that does not to say that people haven't done it. A lot of really stupid people on planet Earth here, uh, Carol. Thank you, Jennifer Folsom. Really appreciate you. Calhoun, you're going to have a big green army here. <laughs> um, so back to uh, back to the car fentanyl thing, right? A little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. You read a few things like methadone stores in the bone. Do you know how long people have been saying this? The problem with methadone is methadone stores inside your bones. And once you get it in there, there's no getting it out. That is one of those things that has been perpetuated for so long that people just keep saying it. It's not, it's not getting in your bones. It's not. It doesn't happen. Sounds good. Thank you so much. Life's good. Really appreciate you. Here's where it's getting. All drugs, but for whatever reason, dorphine, which is uh, the, the methadone, tends to get locked between the really large bones in your body and the muscles that sits on top of them, right? So rolfing is a type of exercise, I mean, a type of massage that you can do where they will come in, grab the muscle and pull it off the bone. Absolutely one of the most horrific experiences. It takes 12 sessions and I did it once and a quarter. I did it and it made you feel like you were a million years younger. I was skiing, I was feeling great. It hurts so bad. Yeah, Rolfing, uh, Shannon Smith says, Rolfing hurts. I couldn't do it the second time, Shannon. First time I did it, I was 30. I went back and tried it at, I think, 34, 35 and did not. But the first day, so if you've done it, you know what I'm talking about. The first time they work on your thighs, you get up off that table and the room starts doing this one and you're going, good God, what the hell just happened? You will start feeling like, you were on, on a kind of drugs that there's so much crap you've had in there. All of that poison and all of that stuff starts to get out of your body. I remember getting off that table and thinking, I'm not getting to the car. Like, there's no way. And I had somebody there to drive me because they said, you're not going to be able to drive yourself home. <laughs> Feels like you're stealing the oxygen of someone who actually deserves it, doing uh, the most just to feel you're worth anything. But we get back up and we keep healing. Izzy, I love you. I really do. Because he's got a tremendous attitude. Jennifer Folsom. Thank you, Jennifer Folsom. Boy, we are looking green, aren't we, Calhoun? Am I green? Tremendous, says Calhoun. It sounds like vomiting. Oh, you're going to. You're going to vomit during rolfing. When they're done, when they're done with the uh with the femur, when they do those legs, oh, I was I was so sick. <laughs> I was so sick. But when it was all said and done and I had done the 12th, um, it was better than I had done steroids. I'd done, I'd done all the stupid things you could do to try to help yourself perform better as you get old. Nothing was better than raw thing and you don't do anything wrong. Marma, Marmelo, Marmelo, Marmelo. I don't think I've ever welcomed you to the lifeboat and I'm sorry for that. But welcome to the uh, <laughs> Marmelo. Marmelo. Okay, thank you, Johnny Scoble. That's why you're here. Uh, is that why it's called rolfing? That's a really funny, I, you know, it never occurred to me to say, it, and I've used the word rolf. It was rolf. a low hanging fruit, I was gonna say. Well, but I've used the word rolf for, uh, you know, for vomiting for years, but I don't think I've ever said that. 
and you also lost down here. Jennifer Folsom says, I wish I you, I could give you 20,000 memberships. Well, I'll tell you what, the, the five was a, a beautiful uh, gift. 20,000 would be uh, would be over the top. But thank you. The five is generous beyond uh, beyond measure. Let's see. Kim on. The uh, Veterans Administration put my honey, hubby on methadone from morphine, then stopped his methadone cold turkey. My God, this is this is what our country does to our uh, to our heroes, huh? Cold turkey methadone is the the cruelest thing that I could think of to do to a human being. I literally could not think of anything that is more cruel. I vomited for thirty two days. And I know this because it took 32 days to get from jail to prison. And I remember people saying to me in county jail, when I first got there, I was like, someone in here has got to have some dope, man. Like I am sick. And this guy said to me, you're not going to see any dope until you get to prison. There's nothing in the county jail. And I started talking to him. I'm not joking. I went in and they said, this is the moment for your arraignment, right? Where the state and they, they explain that stuff. You enter a plea of not guilty always, right? They force you to for all intents and purposes. You don't even really need to show up because it all starts from then. And then you do a pre-sentence investigation and then let, you know, all of those things. Good Lord, Rogue. The VA let him run out of clon let her run out of clon clonazepam, clonopin, and uh, didn't want to help when I was going through withdrawals. That can kill you. I mean, that, that literally can kill you. So I was so sick. When I went to the arraignment, I said to the judge, I want to plead guilty. And the judge said, um, I don't think you understand. I said, oh, I understand. And she said, if you plead guilty today, you know, I, I can't sentence you because there's no pre-sentence investigation and this and that. I said, no, I want you to sentence me now. I said, I did it. What I wanted to do was get to prison, right? That's all I wanted to do. But she said to me, you know, I've never seen anybody take responsibility for this. I was doing everything I could to not throw up in the, in the court. I was, I, you know what dry heaving is? Like my stomach did that. It was the first time in my life I ever had abs, right? But when I got to the, I've told this story on the boat before, but when I got to the jail, I got my foot locker. And as soon as I stepped out of the, you're in the fish tank, you're locked down for 37 days or 38 days. So when I went walking outside, I took my shirt off. Nobody had a shirt on and I was white as a ghost, right? And I'm walking across the, uh, the yard and a guy walking the other way. Keep in mind, I literally haven't seen a mirror, right? Since I got arrested, there are no mirrors in there. So... <clears throat> Christy Hughes. Nice. I didn't have that option. I probably would have thought about it. Um, but the uh, guy says to me, how in the name of God did you get that six pack? And I went, huh? He's like, your stomach. And I had, I promise you the greatest six pack in history. And I said to him, a 300 uh, milligram a day methadone habit. I said, I kicked, uh, I stopped doing it about a month and a half ago. And he goes, oh, you're looking for some dope? And there we go. Right. Right back to it. Uh, it's frightening how bad the Veterans Administration uh, um, are taking care of people who uh, did the hardest job on planet Earth. Right. Um, we really need to treat people a whole lot better. Hey, Christy Hughes, we love you. We really do. I'm sorry that that happened to you. You know. I really am, because I know you can you can downplay it, but that's that's shitty. And it's really? and it sucks, and I and I hope that he he's having a really bad day. Oh, nope, wherever he is, he's having a real bad day. All right, everybody. Tonight, Captain uh, Tommy Scoville will be uh, somewhere else, and Captain Calhoun Scoville will be sitting in the chair. Calhoun, where are you? I am. I am here. There you are, Kristen Melinda. Thank you. Um, I'm sorry, what? I said, are you ready to roll? Oh, I am rolled up and ready. Yeah, Russ, that's the truth, too. He says, you know, when you're overseas, they pass pills out to you like there's no tomorrow. They give you whatever you want. Then you come back home. Sadly, you come back home and they, they double and triple the amount of dope that they're giving you. I got guys I'm working with who are taking, I'm not exaggerating, 23 uh, different prescriptions a day. We have one person who's on the boat. He's a, uh, a soldier returning from combat. 
that takes almost two dozen scripts a day. That's it's terrifying. terrifying. It's terrifying, right? All right, Calhounis. Yeah. Hold on a second. Get to I uh, might have to get me a hat, huh? I don't have my headphones in, but I got a hat here for you. I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> Very Guns and Roses. Dusta, I say that to him all the time. He looks a lot like uh, I see Axl Rose in my kid all the time. I really do. Which I saw a picture. A I'm a huge Axl fan. What's that? Of Axl Rose for the first time last night after the boat. Somebody told you that? No, I saw for the oh. first time in my life, witnessed the visage of Axl Rose. I didn't know what he looked like until last night. Well, you, you looked at old Axl though, right? You got to look yeah, at Axl. Yeah, he had a handlebar mustache, but I could see, I could see. I'll look up young Axl later. No, sure. you need to see, no, you need to see Axl, look up Axl Appetite for Destruction because that's who you, when you look like him. Now he's a fat guy. He looks like me and my brother. But in the, uh, back in the day, it was completely different. And you, yeah, Hippie Chick says like a young Axl. Exactly. 1989 Axl. 1988 Axl. Oh my gosh. Look at this guy. Yeah, that could be me on that magazine. See, there you go. Take me down. And another life, maybe it was. The grass is green. Spaxel. I like where you're going with this, SB. I like where you're going with this. Spaxel. There's that shirt waiting to happen. You're right. He's not fat. He was fit for a bit. I'll tell you something, though. You, we can pick on Axel. Axel's voice is exactly where it was. Axel has not lost a step with his voice. Have you heard him? Uh, it's a freak it, show. Is he, he really still a junkie? No. How long has he been sober? That's got to be like the craziest honestly, success story of all time. He got sober off of heroin before everyone else did. It's one of the reasons really? that they had so much problems is that I heard particularly it was the other way Slash... Yeah, Slash, uh, I, uh, there's a very famous clip of him on stage where he goes, I'm really sorry, everybody, but everybody else in this band seems to be dancing with Mr. Brownstone way too much. And you can look that clip up. He, uh, he was, uh, oh, he's got nothing on uh, Corey Feldman. Let's not get it messed up, people. Jen Marie says he's been off dope since the late 80s. Correct. Wow. Good for him. And Resin Matrix Rabbit says, oh, my God, he is a young Axel. I'm telling you, people, I've been saying that forever. Maybe you will we'll, we'll trade Green Acres for the. At my cousin's no, funeral. It was his favorite song. It used to make me cry. Now it makes me think of him and smile. They played a uh, sweet child of mine at um, my friend Viasa's funeral. And it actually says sweet child of mine on her uh, gravestone. And when she passed, that was probably the. Um, that's the night Stephen Adler was fired. Jen Marie's a fan. That is the night Stephen Adler was fired. Uh, Stephen Adler's a jack wagon anyway. I'm sorry. Uh, hope everything's all right, Mona. Green Acres. What's that, Calhoun? Said, I hope everything's all right, Mona. Hey, Mona. I didn't see Mona. All right. I got I to gotta get rolling, Calhoun. I got to go walk. Sounds all right, good. people. Um, I will see you all this evening. The, the captain will most likely make an appearance. All right, people. See you on the next one. Bye-bye.